basically, the technology applies invisible changes or perturbations to any images that can confuse an AI system, which they want to learn from it, uh, whether it's a you know, deep fake generator or some large language models, um, make effectively make the content not learnable. Uh, these changes are invisible to human eyes, and but it confuses AI systems. Um, certainly, the um, use cases can be applied to uh, many cases like you mentioned on deepfakes generation, but also broadly probably to things like uh, sensitive data, uh, industrial images, satellite images, uh, intellectual properties, among other things. Okay, so how far down the track is this technology, Li Ming? Is it good to use by consumers yet? Uh, yes, so in a way, uh, this is a break, research breakthrough. Uh, we have published a paper. The code actually is on GitHub. Uh, people can download for research purposes to try with it. I think the breakthrough in the uh, research is to have uh, some theoretical guarantee that after you inject this level of invisible watermarks, no matter how you train the AI models, AI to be better, uh, no matter how you uh, adapt the AI to learn from it, it will theoretically guarantee it will not be able to be learned. Of course, how this applies to different use cases, whether the level of um, noise you inject is acceptable for a particular use case and, and uh, the practical uh, solutions, commercial solutions of it uh, still needs to be further uh, developed. So we are actively looking for partners in this space, whether it's from cybersecurity, uh, online platforms, defense, and other places to, to have a look at that, this technology. Okay, so for consumers then, how would we, how would they use it? Is it a program that can be downloaded to protect images and data and information specifically? Uh, right now, not yet. Um, so the code is available, of course, for people who um, can uh, go to a website to download some programming code to play with it from research academics, that's fine. But to have a robust uh, solution that can integrate into your mobile phone or you know by an online platform, applies it automatically when you upload any images. Uh, that still requires a little bit more effort through commercialization and partnerships. So the technology can be extended beyond images, you say, Li Ming, to text, to music. So it can't be used to train AI systems. Writers uh, recently, I'm thinking, have become angry because uh, AI is being allowed to, to use their work to, to train itself. Uh, that's right. So at the moment, the breakthrough is based on image. And we are actively researching into text, video and music, as you uh, mentioned. Um, but the use cases even in image are quite applicable, um, whether from artists creating artwork or individuals uploading uh, privacy-related images. Uh, all this can be uh, to have a wide range of use cases. And, and remember, there's also other type of sensitive data, such, such as satellite images, industrial images. So that could also be protected through this methodology. Right. But how long will this technology be good for, do you think? Because this is sure to prompt other people to develop workarounds to it. Well, that, that's the magic about it. I, I think before this work, there were indeed a little bit of work of data poisoning uh, in terms of poisoning an uh, image uh, so that AI cannot learn from it. But all those studies are empirical studies. People try, and as you expected, uh, AI becomes better, can defeat that. This one, the breakthrough comes from a theoretical uh, guarantee, means even after a certain level of noise injection, no matter how good your AI is, no matter how long it uh, you, you train the AI for, uh, it cannot learn the information from the image. So that's, I think, is very exciting for us. Dr. Li Mingzhu, great to talk to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you.